All right. I'm going to go over the homework for the day that we did today, the notes. Um, we weren't able to actually go over some of the homework examples, but I'm going to go ahead and go through those right now. So we're going to do 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Okay? So let's go ahead and start with number 1. Notice that I'm given g of n as this function right here. I'm also given h of n as this function right here. And what the question is asking is for me to find the product of g times h of 1. So remember what we talked about in class. This product is the same as if I do g of 1 times h of 1. Okay? This is different than compositions. Okay? A composition would be like g of h of 1, like this. Or g of h of 1 like this. So I want you to make sure that you understand that this is not the same as this O, if you will, like composition, like g of h. This right here in the problem is a multiplication. So if there's just a period, it's multiplication. If there's a, a small little letter O, then that's that function composition, which means g of h of 1. Okay, and we know how we did that as far as in class. We would find this one first, whatever the answer was. We would then plug that into the input values of G and get our answers from there. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and make some room. And then we're going to finish out this problem here. But before I do, what I want to do is I want to scroll through and make sure that those compositions are... Um, visual or very clear on the other problems, okay? So we have function composition. Okay, so right here, look at number 16. This right here is what I was talking about. It almost looks like fog, but it's not fog. It's f of g of n, which means do the g first. Whatever you get, we're going to plug it in into f, okay? So remember, one more time, if there's a period, just a period, it means multiplication. Okay, like our problem number one. But if there is this small letter O, it's going to be a function composition. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our number one, and we're going to just keep going with that. And luckily, we're going to do number 16. That's one of the problems that I'm going to do in this instructional video. All right, so G of 1. That means I'm going to take this input, this input value of 1, and I'm going to put it into the G machine, if you will. Okay, so the G machine is up here. The G function is right here. And we're going to put it everywhere where we see this input variable of N. So there would be a 1, and there would be a 1. So let's do the work by hand. I'm going to put parentheses where you would see N because it's almost like leaving a small little space so that you can enter the value, okay? And the analogy that we used in class was like that Coke machine. If I put money into a Coke machine, this right here are like the coin slots where you can put in a, a, a quarter, a nickel, or a dime, okay? So I'm going to put 1 right here and right here, and I'm going to see what I get. 1 squared is 1, plus 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. So the answer would be 7. Okay, so we're going to say this right here is going to equal 7. Now let's find h of 1. Okay, let's go to h of 1 machine first. That means it's a negative 3 times something plus 2. Since we're entering this 1, we're going to enter it right here as a 1. So that means we have negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus this 2 out here we should get a value of negative 1. And the last step, since we are multiplying these answers together, it would give me a final answer of negative 7. If you need to pause the video, rewind, or whatever, please do so to make sure that you understood how we got a negative 7 for an answer. Okay, so let's move on to number 2. So number 2, what it's asking for is what is f of or sorry f minus g 
of 4. So remember, that means this. That means it doesn't mean composition. Again, please do not confuse this multiplication and number 2 subtraction with this. They're not the same thing. Okay? This notation means we're going to take 4 and input it into the value of f, and we're going to take 4 and we're going to input it into the function, that is, of g. Whatever we get from those, we will then subtract whatever those answers are. So let's find f of 4 first. That means we're going to take this input value of 4, and we're going to look at the f machine, and we're going to plug it in where we see that input variable of x. Okay, so let me copy that f machine. That means 4 parentheses minus 3. We're evaluating it at 4, so we would get 16 minus 3, which would give us 13. So this whole answer is going to give us 13. So we'll say like f of 4 is equal to 13. Now let's make sure we understand exactly what this means. This means when x is equal to 4, the answer y or f of x is equal to 13. You saw this back in algebra 1. You saw it as I'm going to go to 4, I'm going to go up to 13, and I'm going to write a point as for 13. Please make sure that you understand, guys, that this was our input variable that we're doing over here with the work that we're showing. We put 4 into the machine. We inputted it. Okay? And we will get an answer of 13. Just like we got, like right here, the way I, I graphed it, like 4, 13, like you did in Algebra 1, we're going to get an answer of 13 here. And that's what I got when I used the function and I plugged in that value of 4. Okay, so please understand the concept of what we're doing so that the work becomes a lot easier. Next one. Let's evaluate g of 4. That means on this g function, let me go ahead and write that out. So it'll be parentheses to the power of 3 plus 2 times parentheses. Remember, that's the machine. And these are the coin slots that we're going to put in this 4. So we'll put it here, and we'll put it here. Okay? So let's put a 4, and we'll put a 4. 4 to the power of 3 is like 4 times 4 times 4. These give you 16, and if I multiply with one more 4, I'll get 64. We know 2 times 8 is just, or sorry, 2 times 4 is just 8. So if I add these together, I'm going to get a 72. Okay? So again, for the first one, I got a 13. The second one, I got a 72. And we're going to subtract this. So it'll be 13 minus 72. Well, if you do that by hand, you know you can subtract the bigger one. So we have, what, 9. I borrowed one here. It became 6. So I'll get a negative 59 is what this is going to end up becoming. I know it's a 59, but the reason why it's a negative is because this 13 minus 72 will dip down and below zero, so my answer is going to be a negative 59. That's my answer for number two. All right, so now let's go to four, okay? So four is saying, what is g divided by f of three? Now remember, just like with these other ones, it almost looked like distribution. It almost looked like, and it felt like g, sorry, f of four, and g of 4, it felt like we distributed this 4 here, and it felt like we distributed this 1 here. Please understand that we are not distributing. It's not distribution, okay? You're applying that input into both pieces. There's no multiplication whatsoever. Conceptually, we need to understand that. So here, we're going to apply the 3 to the numerator, and we're going to apply 3 to the denominator, so that this is really trying to find what is g of 3 divided by f of 3. Okay, So let's go ahead and go to that in our function. So we're going to evaluate g of 3 first. That means we're going to put 3 as an input value everywhere where we see our input variables. So we have 3 parentheses plus 2. And we're going to input a value of 3. 
So we get 9 plus 2 is 11 is the numerator. Okay. Now let's do the next one. Okay. We're looking at now, we're looking at the f function, which is right here. And we're going to input the value of 3, where I, where I see our variable, that input variable. Now, guys, you might see more than one variable in this machine. The one that you're going to input this 3 into is the one that is shown here. So if there's an A here, that's how you're going to match it up. But if it's a different variable, like if it was X, you wouldn't put this 3 where A is at. You would put this 3 wherever X was at. You would try to find where do they have X that I can plug in a 3. Okay, so make sure that you understand that. That's why you have this A here because it's telling you what are the input variables. So now we'll say two parentheses minus four. We know on this bottom piece we're going to plug in a three. So two times three is six minus four is two. So this would be 11 halves, or if you wanted to put 5.5, that would be the answer as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to number eight. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of this and move down to 8, and we'll do number 16 as well. Alright, so number 8. This is our first function composition. This is our two-step process. We're going to, first of all, evaluate what is f of 2, and then whatever that is, as an answer, we're going to plug that into the g function. So let's do this. First of all, let's set up our f that we're going to use as 2 parentheses squared plus 5. Now this is very important. This is different than the other three examples we just did. Okay, so what? 1, 2, and 4. This is different. We're going to plug this 2 into f first. Okay, so we get 2 squared is 4. Multiply the 2 and 4 to get 8, so that we get 13. Now, the reason why it's different is we are not going to plug in 2 into G. We're not. We're going to plug in whatever we got right here is F of 2. Okay, so I'll say that again. F of 2 equaled all of this which at the very end we're saying the y value equals 13 on f when x is 2. So it almost feels like substitution. Everywhere where we see f of 2, we're now going to put a 13. So that makes this original question become g of 13. Okay, That output that we got becomes the input of our second function, our second step process. So now, let's identify g. g is 3 parentheses plus 2. This is g of n. okay? And what we're looking for is g of 13. So that means we're going to put this 13 right here. okay? The 13 that we got as an answer, we're going to plug in where our input variable goes here. okay? So let's erase this because I don't want that to confuse you. It's just saying it's the next step. So we will put 13 into G to get 39 plus 2. The answer should have been a 41. So the answer for this two-step process, you would write G of F of 2 is equal to 41. Okay? So remember, just uh, key differences. You're not putting that 2 into both of them because this parentheses in the middle does not mean to multiply. It's a two-step process. The answer that we got from the first step will be the input value into our second outer function, which will give you a final result of 41. Alright, so now let's move on to 16, and this will be our final example. Now, f of g of n can also be written as f of g of n. They mean the same thing. So if you see it like this, like we saw in number 8, you would do this first, and then you would plug it into f. 
if you see it like this, whatever variable is closest to this input variable of n, that's what you're going to do first. Kind of like what you're seeing over here in orange. Okay? And then whatever you get from that answer, you're going to plug in as an input value into f so that you can get what is f of g of n. All right. So let's define g of n first. We know that g of n is basically all of this right here. Notice there is not a number, there is a variable of n. So we're going to leave it like you see it right now. We're not going to put any parentheses or anything like that because you're not plugging in an actual constant like a 2 or an, an 8 or 5 or whatever. There's not a number, you're plugging in an n. So if you were to plug that in, it would just stay as n. Okay? So this g of n is equal to this as of right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug all of this into the input variable of f. Okay? Because remember, the second step that we're going to do is we're going to do this outer shell of f. Or come over here and do the f this way. So let's set up the f function. That is two parentheses. Okay? So remember, let me highlight it in blue. This right here is symbolizing the input that's waiting for you to throw in some kind of value or whatever you got from the previous step. And we know that the previous step we got g of n, which is all this. So we're going to throw that into here so that we have, it looks like this. So this 2 will multiply and distribute on both of these pieces. So 2 times a negative n will become negative 2n. And 2 times this negative 4 becomes a negative 8. So that your final answer is going to be like this. Notice that this does not have like a, just a number as a final answer. And the reason of it being is our input was not just a number, like in example 8. Our input was a variable that in this case showed that it would have a variable in the very end. So you could write f of g of n is equal to negative 2n minus 8, and that would be the whole answer. Okay? Again, showing that this is what I got as a result. If you need to review or review this video, rewind, whatever you need to, please do so. Help each other out, and you should be good to go. Um, if you have any other questions on any other problems, you can are always more than welcome to come out during Eagle time or during your teacher's tutorial times. All right.